Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. In today's video, we are gonna do a very quick overview of what's going on in the four hour with this pattern. I have changed the pattern for the one day, so it's very important that I give you also an update on this. Notice that the RSI indicator that I'm using from yesterday is different, not just in terms of the colors, but also the behavior is going to slightly change thanks to some additional statistics. If you're following me on Twitter, you're gonna find this post where I'm giving the news that I have written a custom RSI code. If you wanna grab that code for free, go and check it out on my Twitter, and that's gonna give you a link to find out the code. You can also use that link to find all the details on how to set it up on TradingView. This will become the main indicator that I'm going to be using in my channel to drive or swing for our and daily trading. As you can see from the big picture on the monthly, not much has changed. We are just retesting this new support consisting on the all time high. Even if April closed down in red at around this area will be perceived by investors as we manage to retest now as a support the previous resistance and the expectation will be that we are going to continue on our way to the upside. If we get rejected around here, that will most likely take us to this area here, somewhere within the 50,000s, and that of course could delay any potential push to new all time highs. And when I say delay, I mean six months, nine months, or even one year to make another higher high. In regards to the daily, I have done a very, very small change, but very significant. During the past two weeks, I had this line touching these two points. So we have two touching points and we call this as a breakout and we continue to talk about it, calling it a retest of the previous resistance, meaning that we are in a bullish state. This is consistent with what we see in the price action that we are retesting now this as a support, potentially holding it. But I have changed my mind because if we connect this point and that second point there, then we can get something very close to a three point touches. And the methodology that I prefer to use when I'm trading with the RSI is to try to find the most touches of the line. Remember that with the previous trend line that we were using, we had a breakout and a potential retest. With this particular view of the descending broadening wedge, we are getting a rejection against the resistance. So this one is diverting from what we see from the price. In here, we see a support retest. In here, we see a resistance rejection. If we look at the price as well, we see this line, the resistance there. We had a breakout and we fail and we came back inside the range below the dot line. So we are being held by the yellow line, but it's a very ambiguous situation on the daily meaning that many investors are going to be thinking that we are still in a breakout with retest, we are still quite bullish to neutral, and many other investors are going to think that this was a failure, a liquidity grab, and therefore we should complete a potential double top with later a target towards 48k. We need to continue looking for more clues and just by looking this new RSI, I'm really excited because the dotted line in the middle represents the 50 percentile, meaning that the RSI in the last 150 candles has had this 50% of the time. And that value, as you can see, is moving and it has been increasing and now is going down. Mostly that currently is our resistance. It used to be support on all this area and also on this area. It's never gonna be perfect, but as long as we are above and bouncing pretty close to it, we can conclude that. We can also see that the lower limit is coming up and eventually the RSI is going to meet with this line. On the four hour, we are also getting a little bit of a mix interpretation. A few days ago, we had a golden entry. As you can see, we had too many touches and we were expecting to retest this when we were at this high at 75, more or less. We came to retest it and we failed. At that moment, that was the short, that was the golden entry for the four hour that is the trade that I like to take. After this, we came to the last support, we retest, but we ended up failing and coming even lower. 
I place this local resistance there and that is the one that we are breaking out from and right after breaking out the RSI started pointing down. This could be a retest, there's still three hours for this candle to complete. If the price closes above 69, 69, 300, then this RSI is going to end up pointing up, confirming that that was a breakout, but I'm very curious to see if we are going to continue respecting this line here. It has been broken multiple times, but as you can see here, it continues to be respected a few more times as a support. So whether this is going to become again resistance is something that we are going to have to see. And if this breakout was a breakout and you enter in this red and this ends up pointing up and going up, I will say that at around 55 RSI, we will have to be cautious because we might test it once again. In regards to the ETF volume, yesterday we have some significant outcomes. As you can see, on the 4th of April, there was this breakout. We still don't have a single candle in the volume that is higher than this green one that corresponds with this candle in the price. After that, we have red, green, and red. And the one from yesterday is starting to be higher than the previous two, but still not overpassing the one from the 4th of April. A reminder that what I'm looking for is to see that we have big volume and hopefully a green one to confirm that the inflows from ETFs are going to continue driving the market up. Yes, potentially things are going to start slowing down in terms of the buying from the ETFs and we shouldn't necessarily be expecting to have this amount of buying pressure, but at least I don't want to continue seeing the volume declining on this other volume indicator called the volume analysis, you can see that is flagged as an important candle. And it continues to be clear that now we have broken this trend to the downside, which is the good thing. Bitcoin dominance momentum continues to point higher and higher, meaning that the flow of the cash is high likely to continue to go back into Bitcoin. But still, let's have a look today at some alts. Guys, if you like this content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload the video and do not forget to leave down below and do not forget to leave down a comment below with which altcoins you would like me to review. If you remember in the past week I came up with this selection of coins that have been outperforming Bitcoin and today I'm just going to give you an update of where they are. I have clustered these coins into different states because many of them are pretty much doing the same. I'm going to start with the ones that are breaking local support. MNT broke support on the 9th of April. That was a short. Remember that in that video I left a link to this chart. I also have a link to this chart in my Discord server so you can always watch what's going on with all these coins in real time if you have a TradingView account as well. MNT broke down the local support and it has continued coming down. I'm expecting to see some sort of reset closer to our support. Maker did the same, but it has already done it faster than MNT. MNT was running really hot at the stop, therefore it's taking longer to get sold. But you can see when we look at Maker, it pretty much has completed the journey back into resetting at support. Do not assume that the support is going to hold. It will be also beautiful to see here a breakdown and a potential continuation of the short. Bitcoin Cash is in the same state, slightly behind Maker, so there's still room for this to sell lower. And just to clarify, I'm not saying that this is an entry. I wouldn't enter here. This is a trade in progress. The high risk reward entry was at the closing price around here at 671 and that's pretty much because that, that was the candle that broke the momentum and since then it's been coming down. Now we have some coins that have broken out to the upside and are in the state of retesting or potentially invalidating that breakout. Like for example Gala broke out here and is coming back to retest. It's been a couple of uh, candles that is very close to this potential new support, still not closing below, faking out, but pretty much being dragged by the market being down in Bitcoin. Render is in a very similar state, although it has not yet touched the support, it's still 
kind of going in parallel with the support. I hate when that happens. Shiv is in a very similar situation as well. In the price, it faked out, but in the momentum is still above the support. Theta as well. So you can see we have quite a few sharing this particular stage and quite a few breaking below. Now we have many of them that are currently still in this squeeze area and haven't decided neither to break above or below the structure. They are just getting squeezed by the limits. This means that these are great coins to keep an eye on because there's still no decision made. Some of them are Dodge. A Tau as well is on the way to, to resistance. Here, depending on how is the market, will be a great entry for shorting if the market in general continues down or showing some weakness. It's worth mentioning as well. Sometimes I tend to overlook the price to focus too much on the momentum. But as you can see, this pattern here looks like a perfect distribution pattern. It reminds me the look of Bitcoin on 2021, the first stop where you kept doing higher highs, but they were getting slightly curved. And eventually from here, there was a massive dump. So that could initiate towards 60 to keep attention on Tau for a very juicy short. Fed got rejected as well, is still within the squeeze and the pattern on the price again looks pretty toppy. R is the same thing, doing almost the same moves. Core is very difficult right now to make any trade because there's no structure on the price. The only thing that we have is now this support that we might not be holding. That could be a decent short. With was a big fake out in terms of momentum. I'm going to remove this. This is how it was looking the last time I saw it. I say that this is breaking to the downside, but we had this support. So my question was what's going to play out the support? from the price or the breakdown from the momentum to do a short. And what ended up playing out is the support. The price went back above with the bullishness of Bitcoin. We re-enter in the momentum and then we came back below. And once this kind of thing happened in the momentum, you can no longer respect that pattern and you kind of have to give up trading the previous one just because it's no longer a valid level. As you can see, we are back into the lower neutral area of the RSI heat map for hour. Many of them are in the weak area as well. And our weekly chart for Bitcoin is starting to look like crazy. This means a lot of indecision and a lot of liquidity graphs. People pretty much have their own thesis and there's no clear direction. Therefore, most of the moves are being invalidated. So for example, in this candle, it went up, it liquidated the longs, then the shorts. In here, many people started shorting and it went back it liquidated the shorts once again, and this activity continues to happen around here. It's very clear that the price is looking for a decision whether it's going to hold this level and continue to the upside or starts coming down below. But many of the people are taking that decision in a very rush way without expecting this kind of sideways, entering with a lot of leverage and constantly getting hammered by the price not going anywhere. If we were to close the week looking like this, you can even see that we have technically three weeks to the downside and two weeks to the upside. And we could also say that the green candles are larger than the reds. So there is some bias towards the upside, no matter how much I want the price to come here and pay a visit to the bull market support band so I can make a golden buy. But if this bias continues to the upside, it could be that it ends up holding the support at 65.6 on the weekly and then just continue the journey to the upside, leaving many investors with empty hands, including me. We're just nine days away from Bitcoin halving and there's a lot of liquidity accumulating in the upside from people hoping to be able to short Bitcoin in here. If the longs win, obviously that could lead into a short squeeze, making the move to the upside very fast. Below the price, I can see that the order book is getting thinner and thinner, which is something that worries me because normally this 
moves to the upside show this sort of activity below the price before the price goes higher. And actually what I'm seeing is the opposite, that these orders are leaving. You have some volume here that is no longer located at 61. Some of it is chasing the price to the upside, but it's still becoming smaller and smaller as it encounters the price action. And right now there is a small bias towards the shorts, meaning that they are a little bit more in risk. In the past weeks, we have seen that typically that plays out like a very good entry and bias to have if you see volumes over 500k, 600k in this delta. Currently, there's only 100k, so it's not significant enough to say that the shorts are in big risk and that risk is enough to make a squeeze to the upside. Deposits from large wells into exchanges continue to go lower. It's still at a very, very high level, but it's good to see that it's coming down at least. Guys, if you want to copy trade any of my bots, all you have to do is look up for the link in the description. Copy trading bots. You do not need a TTP subscription to be able to copy them. But of course, if you have VIP, you can join my Discord server and claim a massive discount in success fees, which is going to mean that you can retain more of the profits that you make with the bots. You can also hold one of the trading parrots NFTs, connect your wallet to my Discord server to prove that you hold that NFT and then again claim with my team on Discord that discount. If you're thinking to trade this or any of the old coins that are mentioned today, I truly recommend that you have a look at my link OKEX exchange which is in the description. It's currently offering a pool of $60,000. Use that link in the description and join that event and you can win an iPhone, an iPad, Apple Watch, or even USDT. And if you're struggling with KYC, you can trade using Bing X Exchange pretty much all across the globe. Sign up with the link in the description. And again, there's 6,000 in rewards when using my link. This exchange is a beauty because it's not just going to allow you to trade crypto, but also you can trade stocks and indices, commodities, there's perpetuals with leverage and everything. And now I believe that you can even connect Bing X with the bot platform already. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Later today, we're going to have a live stream with Ares, the CEO of Gainium, and we're going to do a backtest live together. I'm going to grab the bot Chris and I'm going to show you how using this powerful bot platform called Gainium, we can do a three year backtest using the 15 minutes time frame, something that you cannot currently do on TradingView. You do not have such an amount of information available. We're going to do advanced techniques, including using, again, the percentile nearest rank on the RSI. And we're going to boost that performance when trading with the coin Solana. The video is meant to be for you to learn more about how to leverage all the advanced tools from Gainium. The setup is not recommended to be run on a live account. Come and join me later today and I'll tell you more about it.